Thousands wait in vain for organ transplants. Soldiers return from battle horribly maimed. There's only so much medicine can do, but we may be on the path to a new technology in which, quite literally, we will be growing new body parts. It's called regenerative medicine. Cells in the human body are manipulated into regrowing tissue. As we first reported last December, researchers have so far created beating hearts, ears, and bladders. Biotech companies and the Pentagon have invested hundreds of millions in research that could profoundly change millions of lives. The story will continue in a moment. Dr. Anthony Atala runs the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine in North Carolina. You name the body part, chances are Dr. Atala is trying to grow one. Currently at the Institute, we're working on over 22 different tissues and organs. So, bladder? Yes. Heart? Liver? Yes. Kidneys, lungs. The possibilities really are endless. Are you suggesting a remarkable future of when organs fail, we simply replace them and live to 120, 150? Well, the hope for the future is that if you do have a patient who has organ failure, you don't want that patient to die because you're waiting for an organ. People are dying every day on the transplant wait list. So the hope of the field is that we can provide replacement tissues and organs that can be used to help them survive. Dr. Atala presides over the world's largest lab devoted to bioengineering body parts. He's made everything from components of fingers to kidneys. It's enough to make Dr. Frankenstein jealous. Slightly spooky, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Dr. Atala says every organ in our body contains special stem cells that are unique to each body part. The key to regeneration, he says, is to isolate and then multiply those cells until there are enough to cover a mold of that particular body part. What is growing here? That is actually a bladder. And you can see here that we actually create a three-dimensional mold first. This is actually coated with cells and it's done one layer at a time. It's very much like baking a layer cake. It's sort of surgery as pastry making. But how do those cells know? <laughs> It's a really stupid question, I understand, but how do the bladder cells know that they should be functioning as bladder cells? Every single cell in your body has all that genetic information to create a whole new you. So if you place that cell in the right environment, it'll be programmed to do what it's supposed to do. Dr. Atala says some body parts are more simple to make than others. Uh, this is actually an ear mold, and you can see here the mold shaped like an ear. And then what we do is we start seeding these with cells. And then this is actually the fully engineered ear. The molds are designed to degrade over time. So as the tissue forms, the mold goes away. And if that was for a child, would that grow with the child? Yes, the body does recognize them as their own, and it does grow with the child. Depending on the body part, Atala says the whole process can take six to eight weeks. This is actually an engineered heart valve. that's beating. This is actually where they get matured, right before they get implanted. He says that human testing of heart valves and blood vessels will begin within five years. He's already grown and transplanted livers in mice and has successfully transplanted human bladders grown outside the body from the patient's own cells. Caitlin McNamara is one of the recipients. I never even knew I could get this far. I'm just living a normal adult life. Meanwhile, in Pittsburgh, researchers are taking a different approach. At the McGowan Institute for Regenerative Medicine, they're trying to trick the body into actually repairing and regenerating itself. Dr. Stephen Badalak is the Institute's deputy director. I would imagine that when people ask you what you do for a living, it's uh, not the easiest thing in the world to explain. I just say, I make body parts. <laughs> it gets their attention. He and his team are convinced that the key to regeneration is finding the switch in our bodies that tells our cells to grow when we're still in the womb. 
the accepted wisdom is that we're born with what we have and that's it. You know, the body doesn't grow new parts. Well, the human body, because I mean, there certainly are examples of species that can regrow their arms and legs, like a newt or a salamander. But as a human, early enough in gestation, we can do the same things. We can regrow major body parts. In essence, is what you're doing trying to find the key to turning that process back on. Yeah. If we could make the body, or at least the part of the body that's injured or missing, think that it's an early fetus again, it's game, set, and match. Dr. Badalak says he now has the material that might be a step towards that. It's called ECM, extracellular matrix, which he gets from, of all places, pig bladders. The extracellular matrix exists in all of us. It exists in all species. It's loaded with signals that instruct cells to do things. Where do pig bladders come into it? They are a convenient source because it's a throwaway product for the agricultural community. And so we can get rid of the cells in the remaining extracellular matrix has proven to be very uh, instructive to and the body. We're very closely related to pigs, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably closer than we'd like to admit. Yeah. <laughs> he says that ECM could regrow virtually every tissue in the body. Flour, well, it looks like flour. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's taking this through airports can be tricky sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> when doctors at the University of Pittsburgh were treating a patient with cancer of the esophagus, who was too weak to face complicated surgery, they turned to Dr. Badalak and his ECM. Our therapy of choice right now is to remove the esophagus and pull the remaining stomach up through the chest and attach it to what's left in the throat. So the treatment's as bad as the disease. So what we have done is said, can we take a regenerative medicine approach to allow surgeons to go in and just resect cancer and instruct the remaining esophagus to regrow itself. Dr. Blair Job operated on 76-year-old Erwin Schmidt last April. Job removed the cancerous lining of the esophagus and inserted a sleeve of ECM. Instead of forming a scar that would block his esophagus, doctors believe the ECM instructed his cells to regrow a new lining. Today, Schmidt is cancer-free. I'm eating real good. Uh -huh. I feel terrific. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to pick weight on. That's great. No pain, no nothing. So essentially, you gave him a new esophagus. We're very excited uh, by this. And I think, you know, my heart, I feel that this will change the way we do things, ultimately. But I think right now it's too early to claim victory. You look like you're claiming victory already, though. <laughs> I feel fantastic good. Based on that success, Dr. Job and his colleagues hope to start a full clinical trial soon. Welcome back. And then there's the military. The Pentagon has invested $250 million in regenerative research aimed at helping soldiers with severe battle injuries, regrowing muscle and skin for burn injuries, as well as transplant technology for lost limbs. Dr. Stephen Wolf is the chief of clinical trials at the Army's Institute for Surgical Research. I would imagine that the patient group that you're dealing with are a particularly positive one. They're young, eager men who suffer these horrible losses and want to get as much of their lives together as they can. Absolutely, they want to go back. Most of these guys do, they say, hey, fix me up so I can go back. Beginning this month, Dr. Wolf is leading a clinical trial that could one day make that possible. Army surgeons will implant ECM in the limbs of severely injured soldiers in hopes of restoring muscle lost to roadside bombs. What we're doing with this project is putting this ECM in there and then hoping that it populates and it becomes muscle. It also, in a place like this, goes by the name of pixie dust, correct? Right. <laughs> well, it is somewhat magical, isn't it? The whole notion of, well, we're going to put this powder in there and it's going to make a new thing. And there is a lot of biological support of that whole notion, so it's not magic, you know, but it certainly seems that way. What do you hope to achieve here? Well, we're not going to, you know, just show up and go, hey, okay, here's your leg, we'll stick it on. What we hope is that we can replace certain tissues that can make them function as well as possible. Which is what Isais Hernandez says ECM did for him. Hernandez was so severely wounded by a mortar round 
that amputation of his leg seemed likely. Dr. Wolf operated on Hernandez last year as a first test of ECM in this type of injury. He placed ECM in Hernandez's thigh, which grew entirely new muscle in a wound that had once exposed the bone. Give me another five, let's just see. His physical therapist, Johnny Owens, says the muscle growth is clear. And relax. It has grown. Yeah. yeah. It, on, on imaging and, and to, to what we see and to what he feels, it feels like it's grown. Do you feel the difference? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, feel, it doesn't get um, as tired as quickly or shaky. Before, after doing some of the workouts, I'd have to take a break, and now I don't have to take a break anymore. It's remarkable. It's yeah. amazing. It must give you a lot of pleasure to see that kind of progress. It does, yeah, and I think there's a lot of potential to see bigger and better things. Well, you saw that this, to some extent, worked. Were you surprised? Did it fail miserably? No. Uh, in fact, it seemed to work. <laughs> Eureka! If this works, it could really change trauma medicine, yes? In terms of muscle loss, now, all right, what happens if we put that by a nerve? What happens if we put that by bone? What happens if we put that by your heart? What happens if we put that by... See, so, so you see it, it opens a lot of doors, if it actually works. The military is also using regenerative techniques in hand replacements for amputees. Doctors at the University of Pittsburgh have successfully transplanted a hand taken from a cadaver onto the arm of Marine Josh Maloney, who lost his right hand working with dynamite. How's the hand feeling today? Using cell therapy and a bone marrow transplant from the donor, doctors were able to get Josh's body to accept the new hand without many of the anti-rejection drugs that are almost always toxic. Maloney says the surgery has given him his life back. To Dr. Wolf, it's the least medicine can do. These guys, they were protecting us. They took the hit for us, and they deserve our respect for that reason. And, uh, and from my perspective, they deserve our very best effort to do the best we know how to do, and then further to do the best that we don't even know yet how to do. <laughs>